Hello there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So this week we're continuing along with the um, gaming export. We finished up last week talking about optimizing sprite sheets and really understanding how the sprite sheets are generated from the drawing view um, and what the difference is between the drawing view and the camera view. So this week I have some great announcements. We have a new version of the gaming export coming out that supports a couple of new things, one of them being deform and the other being cutters. So cutters are what we use to do masking in Toon Boom. So this week I'm going to take you through how to do deform for a game object. So um, this sheep, right, as the way it is right now, is not the best example to show deform on because there's nothing really that I would want to deform on it. So um, it's easy though for me to take this character and make it into a different type of character that I would. So what is a good thing to put deform on? Deform is great for things like hair, tails, anything that you want to sort of bend or sway. So what if I take this sheep and turn it into a horse instead? So one thing that I want to mention here is that if you want to take a character and you want to make another character based off of it, then there's a couple of steps that are good to do first. So the first thing I'll do is I'll do a save as. Remember when we did multiple different animations within the same character, we did save as new version. So for example, if I have the sheep and I want to do the sheep run, the sheep idle, the sheep jump, I'll use save as new version. The difference between save as new version and save as is save as new version shares all the same drawings. So if it's the same character, you do want it to share the same drawings because then you can have one sprite sheet for all of those animations. But as soon as it's a new character and you need a new sprite sheet, then you want to do a save as. So the first thing just that I'll do is I'll do a save as and I'll call this, you know, game horse. So rather than going from scratch and drawing this guy all over again, why don't I take my sheep model and actually just go ahead and redo the sheep so that I can turn it into a horse. So the first thing I want to keep in mind is that I want my horse to be um, relative size wise a little bit bigger than my sheep, right? Because the, the, the horse is a bigger animal. And so I'll actually just take my select tool, select all of the drawings, and then scale them up. I'm choosing to use my select tool because I do want um, to keep in mind the relative size so that if I were to pop the sheep into a scene and also pop the horse into a scene, I don't want to have to use the transform tool and put a keyframe on it to get them at the same rel at the correct relative size because every time I have to use the transform tool it's a keyframe and so it's best to have that resting position like we were talking about last time at the correct size. So I'll use the select tool. Um, you may have a preference on that's called select tool works in a single drawing and if you do then you wouldn't be able to select all the layers at the same time. So just to check in the stage preferences under camera I chose to deselect select tool works on a single drawing. When it's deselected I can use my select tool and do a multi-select of all my drawing layers at the same time. Uh, which is what I want to do in this case so that I can scale them all up so that I don't have to scale them up one by one. Keep in mind if you need to check this option off you may need to restart the interface in order for it to apply. So one thing that you'll notice is because I had cloned the eye, the eye itself is placed uh, via a keyframe. So if I want to just go in here and adjust the eye so if I want to adjust the eye, I can double click on the eye, enable animate using animation tools, and then I can use my transform tool to place the eye where I want its resting place to be. And once it's in the right spot, I can turn off animate on animation tools again, just to make sure that I don't accidentally draw on it. So um, just to be clear, I just put a keyframe on the drawing itself, not on the peg layer so that I can reset the pegs and have them go back to the correct position. So it's a bit of a workaround because you notice that most of the time, and this is something I did in the very first uh, episode on the game export, I like to have this animate using animation tools turned off on the drawing layers so that when I make a change, if I animate something, that the keyframe is placed on the peg layer 
above the drawing layer and not on the drawing layer itself. And that just makes it a little bit easier for me to keep the keyframes and the drawings separate, which is nice when you're trying to just keep things organized. Okay, so now I have my sheep, which I'm going to turn into a horse at the correct size. Um, the next thing that I'll do is I will duplicate the palette. If you just um, change the colors in the palette without duplicating it first, it will make it easy to repaint. However, it will share the same color IDs. If I create my horse using the same palette as my sheep and I make some changes, if I pull the horse and the sheep into the same scene, they're going to share the same palette and they'll end up looking the same. In the case of the game export, it might not matter that much because if you're never going to work with two characters in the same scene in Harmony, you'll never even notice. Because when you export for game, it creates your sprite sheet at that moment from that scene uh, using those palettes. But just to be on the safe side, I'll come in here and I'll duplicate this palette. And um, as I am changing my character, I'm going to be repainting the areas using the new palette. And so I'll rename this palette to call it Horse Palette just to make it really obvious. And then within my horse I can make some changes. So if I'm going to do a horse that'll be brown, for example, then I'll just make the lines maybe kind of a dark brown. The white um, will become a bit of a lighter brown and I have the gradient on the body. I'll just keep them generally the same sort of setup and then we'll see how it works when I when I paint it in. Of course after I paint them in I can always decide that I want to go back and make some changes again. Um, that's never a problem. You can always go back and make changes to the color palettes after you've painted them in. Okay so now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'll repaint this um, drawing with the new colors. So you can choose to use the regular paint bucket or you can use the repaint bucket. Um, in this case, they both sort of do the same thing. Um, so then I can just come in and select the colors that I want to repaint. When it comes to painting lines, if you used your lines using the uh, pencil tool, you can also use your inking, your inking tool to repaint those lines. Um, I'll just temporarily make the color a little bit lighter so that it's easier to see the lines when I'm painting them in. An easy way to repaint or to reassign paint to a region is to simply select the region with your select tool and then select the new color palette that you want to apply and then it will apply the new color but it will keep the same orientation for example if you have a gradient in there. It will keep the gradient matrix oriented the same so it's kind of a fast way to repaint. Okay, so now that I've got this thing repainted, I can come in here and just adjust the colors a little bit more to get them where I want them to be. If there's any changes that need to be made, I can make them at this time. Okay, so then um, the other things that I want to do on this, the whole point of me doing this was to have a tail that I could put a deform on, right? So I actually want to change this tail to be a totally different tail. When you're um, using your pencil line, if it's not at exactly the right size, there's a little trick you can use where you can hold down O and then you can click and drag to resize whatever brush that you have selected. It just makes it a little bit easier to get your brush at the correct size. Okay, and then the last thing I'll do to make this look a bit more like a horse is I'll change the shape of his face. And I'll also go back and make his legs a little bit longer. You can select some points with your contour editor and nudge them using either the arrow keys or shift plus the arrow keys to nudge them a little bit faster.
So now that we have the character design all finished, we are ready to go ahead and add some bone rigging into this character. So before I get started though on the actual rigging, there's a couple of preferences that we can set up that will enable us to actually create the right type of bone rig for gaming. So first of all, if I go to the stage preferences, then in here I can go into the deformation tab and I can make sure that automatically create new deformer structure for each pose is turned off. And so it's already checked off right now, so I'm okay, but make sure that you go in there and turn this off. Um, in the case of doing some rigging for animation, sometimes you do want to have a different bone structure for different drawings, but in gaming we have to make sure that it's the same deform rig no matter which drawing. So as long as you're on the same drawing layer, it's going to share the same rig. So the next thing I want to do um, is I'll just select my the drawing that I want to put the deform on, and then I'll go ahead and turn on my rigging tool. Now in the rigging tool, by default, it's sort of in a hybrid mode where you can create both bones and curves, but curves are not supported in the game export. So what you really want to do is just turn it into bone mode only, and this way you can only create bones, and so you won't accidentally start creating curves. So now I just want to make sure that I enable setup mode because whenever you're setting things up, you want to be in setup mode, and then I can come in here and start to create my rig. So I'll just click to place where the bone rig is going to start and then I can click a few times to create a couple of different bones and then what happens is it will create bones and then in between those bones there will be what we call articulations which are basically just joints. Now if I've created the bones themselves I want to go through and now resize those articulations so that they are at the right size for the rigging to work well. So let me just uh, zoom in here a little bit show you guys what I'm working on. So I just am going to switch over into my transform tool whilst I'm in setup mode and then I can grab um, the, the handles on these guys and resize them. A good rule of thumb is that you want the size of your joint to be about the same size as the size of your drawing. And the bigger that the bone is, the more bendy or the bigger that the articulation is rather, the more bendy that drawing is. So I'll just make these guys pretty bendy, a little bit bigger there. And now I just need to copy this position back out to the main scene. This is what we call the resting position. So the resting position is basically the position as the rig is set up when it's in setup mode. But if I were to leave setup mode, you see that it tries to squish it back to the smaller joint size. So before leaving, it's a good idea to just copy that out. So I'll just go ahead and select the group here for the deform. And then I can go into my deform toolbar copy resting position to current. Now when I leave setup mode you see that the sort of rig outside of setup mode now matches what the rig looks like in setup mode. And then I can just come in here and I can test this out. So I can put a few keyframes on it. Um, I, when you want to make sure that it does animate then make sure your animate button is turned on there. And then I can come in here and I can just bend this a little bit, test it out, and bend this one down here. If you need to make any changes to the rig uh, because the rig isn't working then you can always go back into setup mode you know maybe I want to move that down a little bit more and then move this one up a little bit more make that just slightly bigger and then any changes that I make remember I still have to select that deform group copy resting position to current and now I can leave setup mode again and try again and see yeah I get a much nicer deform on that now it's really really smooth and bendy and that's what I want. So now I can just come in here I'll just close the group whenever I'm doing sort of a, a an animation that's on a cycle I always like to do it with the group closed and that way I can see I'm going for about 20 keyframes of animation here so I can hit F6 or I can also turn on the timeline view toolbar. If you just right click in the toolbar area here, I like to turn on the timeline view toolbar if you don't have it already. And then you can force to insert a keyframe there. And uh, then I can copy and paste that keyframe. So I can copy it here with control C, paste it with control V back under frame 20. And then I can make some changes. So halfway through here, maybe I'll just uh, add a little bit of sort of drag behind and then the character is going to bounce down and then I'll have a little bit of a overlapping action on that tail as it 
follows behind there, and then back up again. And so if I play through now, I can just check out how that works. And it looks like I've got some lingering keyframe over here that I'll just remove so that I can just make sure I keep my um, frame count sort of within these 20 frames. And I can also stop the playback there if I want to just check the playback within that region. There we go. So you see how having a bone deform on there allows you to really bend and twist that drawing so that you can get a much more realistic look and feel for when you're doing this um, export out. And you don't need to have new drawings for that because traditionally, whenever you wanted to change the shape of a drawing, you'd have to have a new drawing. Uh, there's no real, apart from being able to squash and stretch a drawing, there was no way of sort of bending or twisting a drawing before. So now when you use bones, you can really condense down so that you don't have to have as many drawings in your sprite sheet. It's super useful. Great for things like hair, for tails, um, clothing, anything that needs to sort of change shape. So if you had been using a previous version of the game export, you may also have to clear out your preferences. I'll just show you how to do this on Mac um, because I'm not on Windows right now, but you can also do this on Windows. But basically, if you go into Library, Preferences, and then Toon Boom Animation, Toon Boom Harmony, then you'll see that there are many different things in here within your preferences. And what we want to clear out is we want to clear out the scripts for 1110. So this is 11.1. I'm using Harmony 11.1 right here. So if you were using a previous version of 11.1 and then you, we added the deform export to the script, then you'll need to clear that out. So um, if you do ever need to clear that out, though, make sure that you save your scene. Let's just save this as a new version. Game Horse Idol Best. And then you want to quit Harmony because if it's open while you make the changes to the preferences, then as soon as you close Harmony, it's going to overwrite the preferences with whatever you had at the time that you closed Harmony. So I'll close Harmony first, and then I can always check out the preferences, just throw them in the trash, and then I can reopen Harmony, and I know that I've cleared out the script so that it's going to use the latest version of the script. For those of you who are using the game export for the first time, you can skip this step. So now I'll just go and add the script back to my toolbar, TB export to sprite sheets, and then TB export to sprite sheets again, and then clicking on the arrow. So now I can use the export, and I'll just save it. I saved it here to a place where it's actually being saved within my Unity scene file. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. So I have my Unity project saved here in this folder. And if you save it within Unity, your Unity project, and then Assets, and then Streaming Assets, and then Harmony Resources, then these assets will be streamed live through the Unity project when you open and run the Unity project. So I can choose this folder to do that. And I'll just call this now Horse4 to give it a different save name, um, and then I can save it within there. So now we always want to double check our animation in Unity just to see how it's going to work. And so I can just create a new scene. And then in this new scene, I can add my harmony object. I'll browse to the same folder that I saved just a moment ago, Horse 4. I'll create the camera. And then on my horse, I'll also add the script to loop one. And then I can hit play to load the animation in. Let's just move the camera slightly farther away. I'm a bit too close right now. And then I can hit play again. And you see how I am seeing the animation that I did on that tail using the deform. So there you go. You now have the ability to put bone deform on your, your game rigs. Super, super useful thing, and it's something people have been asking us for for a while, so we're really excited about this. We'd love you guys to try it and uh, give us your feedback.
So next week we'll go over the other new thing, which is adding cutters or masking to your game objects.